Hello, welcome back to Beyond Planet Earth. This is part 10.3, Orbits and Eccentricity. And today's aim is to calculate the eccentricity of an ellipse and describe how gravity affects the orbits of planets. So how are orbits of planets described? Orbits are described of the planets in our solar system as slightly eccentric ellipses. So how does an ellipse compare to a circle? If you look at this picture here, this would be a perfect circle. All right, this would be an ellipse. So once we get a little more flattened or a little more oval to in shape, it, this is called an ellipse. When it says slightly eccentric, this tells you it's just barely off from a perfect circle, just slightly off. An ellipse looks like a stretched out circle. So the more it stretches out, the more oval it gets. So we describe an ellipse by how eccentric it is. The more eccentric, the more oval. Okay, so some of the um, characteristics of an ellipse is if you were to draw um, a circle using a compass, you would have one point in the center that you would use to create your circle with a string or with the compass itself. When you have an ellipse, there's actually two focal points. So focal points, um, the plural for focal points is foci, and this is this word right here, foci, and we have two focal points in an ellipse. The closer the foci are together, the more circular it is, the less eccentric. The farther apart the foci get, the more elliptical, or the more eccentric, the more oval. So we determine eccentricity by measuring two lines on our ellipse. The first is the major axis, which you find by drawing a line through the, um, the most flattened part of the ellipse. And the next is the distance between the foci. So we measure the length of the major axis, which would be this here, or this here, or this here. Okay, it always goes through the two foci. And we also measure the distance between the foci. So using that, we can calculate the eccentricity. A focus is a point on the major axis, and like I said, in an ellipse, we have two focal points, which are called foci. So if we look on the front of our reference table, we're going to use our last equation that we haven't yet used, which is the eccentricity formula. So if you look on your front page, you'll see this formula for eccentricity, and it says it's the distance between foci divided by length of the major axis. I want you to add the shorthand for this on your reference table. So you can do this either in pen or in colored pencil. And for eccentricity, we um, abbreviate this to E equals D over L, where E is eccentricity, D is the distance between foci, and L is the length of the major axis. And also, we will draw one here just as a reference point, where this is D, between here, and L, I'm going to switch colors, and L would be from here to here, that's my little L. So, some important numbers to know when it comes to eccentricity. An ellipse with an eccentricity of zero is a perfect circle. So zero eccentricity simply means it's a perfect circle. Notice that a perfect circle kind of resembles a zero, so that can help us to remember. A perfect circle has no eccentricity, so zero eccentricity. If you stretched out the circle more and more and more, okay, until you couldn't stretch it out anymore, the most oval it could get, you would finally end up with a straight line. Okay, I think we can agree that's the flattest you could possibly pull apart and flatten your circle. And, um, and el an ellipse with an eccentricity of 1 is a straight line. So if you pulled it to the most eccentric you can go, you'd end up with a straight line, which would be an eccentricity of 1. So when we calculate eccentricity, our numbers are always going to be between 0 and 1. Okay, so between circle and straight line. Notice a straight line looks like a 1, and a circle looks like a 0. So that can help you keep those two reference points in mind. 
all eccentricity values are between 0 and 1, which means we are working with decimals. We are going to have 0 point and then numbers after the decimal when working with eccentricity. Okay, now the sun in our ellipse. So keep in mind the orbit is what we are talking about here. Our orbits in our solar system are slightly elliptical, slightly eccentric. Okay, so if this is the planet moving around the orbit, where would the sun be located? Okay, the sun is going to be located at one of the foci, one of the focal points. So one of our points is the sun, and the other, there's nothing there. So we consider the sun to be at one focal point, and that is how eccentricity operates, with the planet working around the orbit and a sun at one of those, the sun at one of the focal points. The sun is not at the center of Earth's orbit. Since our orbit is not a perfect circle, the, it cannot be at the very center. It's slightly off from the center. So let's calculate the eccentricity of this ellipse here. So I'm going to give you the um, measurements. So if we have two meters between these two focal points, and across here the length of the major axis is five meters, let's calculate the eccentricity. So we'll write, always write out your formula. Eccentricity is D over L, or distance between foci over length of the major axis. Let's write out our formula. So the distance between foci is right here between the two points, two meters, divided by the length of the major axis, which is all the way across, which is five meters. Now we put this into our calculator. 2 divided by 5, and we get 0.4. Now, the first thing is, what are the units? Notice we are dividing meters by meters, which causes them both to cross out. There are no units for eccentricity. No units. Okay, they cross out. Now, the other rule with eccentricity is that we always have to go to the nearest thousand. If you recall, the nearest thousandth means that there are three places after the decimal. So we need three decimal places. So if we end up with 0 0.4, as we did in this problem, we need to put spa uh, space holders here. And we end up with 0.400 for our eccentricity. Let's turn to page 15 in our reference table. And we're going to look quickly at eccentricity as we start to see the last page of the reference table we haven't touched. Notice right here in our solar system data, here is eccentricity. Okay, notice the eccentricity is given for each of the planets, the eight planets, as well as for Earth's moon. Okay, so it's right in here that it needs to always be between 0 and 1. And you'll see these all are given to the nearest thousandth. Now remember the rule. One is, is very eccentric or very elliptical. And zero is a perfect circle. So one is very eccentric or elliptical. And zero is a perfect circle. perfect circle. So looking at our question here, which planet has the most perfectly circular orbit? So let's take a look at these numbers here. Which of the planets has the most circular orbit? So if it's most circular, are we looking for a number closest to zero or closest to one? So since we said that perfect circle is at zero, we want the number closest to zero, so the smallest number. So looking here for the smallest number, the planet with the most circular orbit is Venus with a point zero zero seven. So there, the, Venus's orbit is the least eccentric, the least elliptical, the most circular. They all mean the same thing. How about the planet with the most eccentric orbit? Most eccentric or least circular? So remember, most eccentric is the higher number closest to one. So which of our orbits has the highest eccentricity? That would be Mercury with a 0 0.206. That is the highest eccentricity of our planets. So Mercury's orbit is the least circular, the most elliptical, the most eccentric, the most oval. 
And just a side note, since we were talking about the moon the last couple of days, what is the eccentricity of the moon's orbit around the Earth? Okay, take a look at the moon, the Earth's moon down here, and there's the information given for its period of revolution, its period of rotation, and the eccentricity of its orbit is right here. So the moon's eccentricity is 0 .055. Its orbit is has a 0 .055 eccentricity. How is the force of gravity affect, um, affected by the mass of objects and the distance between them? So how does gravity have an effect on our orbits? And the bigger an object is, what do you think happens to the gravity? The force of gravity increases the more mass an object has. So the larger the object, the more gravity it will have. So the sun has immense gravity compared to the planets. Since its distance is further than some, like the moon has more stronger gravity on the earth because it's so much closer, even though the, the sun is so much larger. But the distance between also affects, so as distance between the objects increases, our force of gravity decreases. How does gravity affect the speed of a planet as it orbits the sun? So gravity increases when the um, object is closer to the planet. When the two planets are close together, or the sun and the planet are closer together, the gravity is stronger, and when they're further apart, the gravity is weaker. So gravity changes depending on the, um, how close the object is in its orbit. If you recall, we said that Earth is closest to the sun in January. So in January, when we're closest to the sun, we are moving faster. Earth moves faster in its orbit in January than it does in the summer when we're furthest away in July from the sun. So our speed, our orbital velocity, changes based on how close we are to the sun. When does a planet move slowest in its orbit? We're looking here at the orbit. This is the path that the um, planet is taking. And if we're, this is an exaggerated model. The sun is not nearly this far over. But if the sun is over here, when the planet is furthest from the sun, it's called aphelion. Notice the word helio in there for sun. That's when the planet would move slowest, and as it gets closer to the sun at perihelion, or near the sun, it would move fastest. As the planet moves in its orbit, it's going to move slowest as it's farther away, and then it's going to get pulled in by gravity and move faster. Then it's going to move slower, and then it's going to get pulled in by gravity and move faster. So the planet moves slowest when furthest from the sun at aphelion and it will move fastest when it's closest to the sun at perihelion when the gravity is acting strongest on the planet. So this little um, animation shows what I just was talking about. You can see how the, um, how the planet speeds up as it approaches the sun and slows down as it moves away in its orbit. So you can see there's much faster movement as the planet gets closest to the sun because the gravity is acting on it more strongly when it's closer. So let's practice. We said we have to round to the nearest thousandth. When you're calculating eccentricity, you're going to enter those two numbers in your calculator, and often it'll spit out a whole long line of numbers. So let's just practice quickly rounding to the nearest thousandth. All right, so remember the nearest thousandth is three places after the decimal. So underline the three places after the decimal and circle the fourth. Do we stay or bump up one? We stay in the situation because we only have a one on the fourth digit. So we are at 0 0.313. Next, we have 576 and we have a 7 in the fourth spot. So in this case, we are going to bump up 1 to 577. 981, we have a 2. We are going to stick at 981. 031, we have a 5 here. So we need to bump up 1 to 032. 094 with a 9. We are going to bump up 1 to 095. 039 and there's a 9. So what do we stay or bump up 1? Since there's a 9 here, we need to bump up 1. So 039 would go to 040. 040. Let's do a practice example. Let's calculate eccentricity to the nearest thousandth. 
Our focal distance, which is the distance between foci, is 5 centimeters, and the major axis length is 21.5. So the first thing we want to do is write out the formula. So we have E equals D over L, distance between foci over length of the major axis. Our distance between foci is 5 centimeters, and the length of the major axis is 21.5 centimeters. So remember our units cancel because we are dividing centimeters by centimeters. Let's plug this in a calculator. 5 divided by 21.5 and it spits this out. 0 0.232 5 5 8 1 4 so remember, we must give our answer to the nearest thousand. So let's underline the first three digits and circle the fourth. And we've got 232. Do we stick or bump up one? We're going to bump up one, so our answer is 233. And that concludes 10.3 eccentricity and orbits. And we'll be talking about this more in class tomorrow. See you next time.